Hi everybody and welcome again to the Summer Library Program from the Thompson Library. This week is all about water and different liquids. The ocean and other bodies of water are often the site or the center for stories like the Little Mermaid or Excalibur and the Lady in the Lake and even here in New Mexico where we don't have very large bodies of water they still become the center for stories like with Rudolfo Anaya's novel Bless Me Ultima which took place on the Llano Estacado. It has a river in it that is very important to the story. When I was looking for an activity to incorporate water into the theme of Imagine Your Story summer program, I found this one called The uh, Ocean in a Bottle. And along with the imaginative play that comes along with making the craft, you know I like to explain the science as well. Uh, this is a very straightforward craft. You just have your bottle the oil and a little bit of food dye. You take the tape off of the cap, you take the cap off and you put water into the bottle uh, as much as you like and you put your cap back on nice and tight. Put your tape back on as well and slosh it around and you get to enjoy the fluid shape of the water and the oil. So this is an everyday activity. Uh, here are our everyday um, things that we have around the house, but let's talk about what is going on. As you can see, the water and oil do not separate. The food dye is only dyeing the water. It may appear green a little bit here, but that is because the water is mixed in with that oil. And lastly, I'd like to point out that the oil always floats on top of the water. So let's start out with why uh, the uh, oil and water stay separate. So according to scienceprojectideas.co.uk, water and oil do not mix because the smallest particles of water are polar, like magnets. So I have a couple of magnets here, and they are, of course are attracted to each other. They have a positive, oh, they have a uh, one one pole is uh, negatively charged and one pole is positively charged and they attract to each other and so the water molecules also have poles and have a charge. One side of the water molecule is negatively charged and the other side of the molecule is positively charge, charged. The oil does not have poles and it does not have a charge. So the oil, so the water and its poles are attracted to each other and not at all attracted to, to bond with the water. That the water has poles that are attracted to each other and that the oil does not have poles is why the oil and the water stays separate. It is possible to blend uh, uh, fluids like water um, and oils like with the process of homogenizing milk and also the process of emulsification. Um, oil and vinegar are sometimes <laughs> emulsified for salad dressing and lotion is another example of uh, emulsified water and oils. So why uh, here with our craft does the oil only affect the water, oh, excuse me, why does the food dye only affect the water and not the oil? Um, and you can get uh, oil-based food dye and it would dye the oil and not dye the water. This is a water-based food dye so it dyes the water and not the oil. And, uh, and, it, and that is because of the same thing that keeps the water and the oil separate. So now why does the oil float on top of the water? And that is because of density. I brought up density with the magic dancing beads but we didn't talk about it so let's talk about it now. Density is the relationship of something's size to its weight. So I have um, a couple of rocks that I love to share and it really helps uh, demonstrate here um, density. I have these two rocks and they are approximately the same size. Um, they're both brown rocks. This one is uh, a different, uh, darker. Um, and uh, about the same size and about the same shape. But if you could hold these in your hand, you would be able to tell right away that this pumice is much lighter than this rock over here. 
um, and that we can tell a difference in weight tells us something about its, its density. It tells us something about how closely packed the tiniest parts are. As you can see with this rock, uh, or maybe you can't see, uh, but this rock is very porous. It has lots of holes in it, and those holes are like little air pockets in there. Uh, when we think about liquids, we can't necessarily see uh, the gaps between the particles. We don't see air pockets usually in a liquid. There might be for a little while, but they go away. Um, but we can measure the weight of, um, of these objects, and it'll give us an idea about the density uh, of, these, of these objects, whether we're talking about solid things or we're talking about fluid things. So I have a scale right here, and I'll measure these um, different objects. First we'll measure this heavier rock, and it weighs nine-tenths of an ounce. Now we'll weigh the pumice, and the pumice weighs uh, half of an ounce. Now let's measure this water, and this uh, amount of water is the same amount of water as this vegetable oil. Uh, it is the same volume. Uh, but this water weighs four ounces uh, and three tenths, and the oil weighs three ounces and eight tenths. This amount of oil is lighter than this water. So it really tells us something about the density of the object. Now, this is the fun part about these rocks right here. I'm going to drop these rocks into the water. Okay. Of course that rock floats. It is very dense. This rock weighed about half as much as this other rock and it actually floats um, in the water. It is. Um, it has so many air pockets and it is so less dense that it can actually float in the water. So I found that hiking one day whenever I was a little kid. Okay, so our next experiment here about fluid density is with all of these different cups that I have sitting out here in front of me. I have nine different liquids. Okay, and we're going to layer these in this vase right here. Okay, and then I have some solid objects and we're going to see how dense those solid objects are in relationship to the uh, to these liquids. So I have honey, I have corn syrup, I have real maple syrup, this is whole milk, dish soap, water, vegetable oil. I've dyed this rubbing alcohol green so that we can see the lamp oil that will go on last. Okay, get my two pieces of paper out here so I keep myself in order. And we're just going to start, I'm going to go ahead and stand and hopefully we, it'll work out okay. Um, by pouring in the honey as the base of this uh, fluid density experiment. Here it goes. Now, if you held these cups in your hand, these are all uh, pretty close to the same uh, volumes. I measured these out so that we have the, about the same measurements but they all weigh different amounts. I didn't weigh them, but I could have. It would have been very interesting to see. Okay, there is our honey. Next we have this corn syrup, and let's see if they don't mix. They may mix a little bit because it's dropping in there kind of from a height, so it has a little bit of force from the gravity, but I'll pour it in slow. There were lots of experiments like this uh, on the internet, um, and I really should have done the, uh, the salt water experiment um, to fit in best with our ocean theme, but it just did not uh, register in my mind until a little bit too late. I remember seeing this uh, experiment, this demonstration, in, uh, whenever I was little, and I always thought it was really neat, so I wanted to, to share it. I have an opportunity to share it, so I always wanted to share it. Now those two are, I can see the layers there. Now I'll make sure to get a good picture of this. Okay, 
for um, uh, so that you all can enjoy it as well. Here, and you can see this one is much thinner. The honey was very thick, and this maple syrup here is much, much thinner. So there's different ways to describe things. Some things viscosity. Let's see if I can pour it on top and not have them mix too much. You can see it wants to kind of go down in there and blend. My technique isn't right. I didn't want to waste anything, so I'm just kind of doing it one go. Okay, now I'm going to use this baster to, to layer on the other liquids. Oh, I can see it. It kind of wells down deeper in the middle there from the force, but I can see it almost settling out and creating layers. So this is how we're going to do the milk and the next bits of more fluid stuff. I'm going to try to pour it down the side. Oh yes, I think this is really neat. So with the salt water uh, experiments, you can um, change the density of water by adding different amounts of salt. And, and what's really neat about that is that um, then things that didn't float in water will float in this salty water that you've now created. Okay, there's the milk. Okay, the next one is dish soap. Oh. And uh, this dish soap is uh, regular uh, strength that is not concentrated, and that would be an interesting adaptation for this. Maybe I should have just poured this one. I'll do that next. Uh, for this, um, for this activity to see where where it fits. Oh yes, I can see it just floating up to the top of the milk, which is kind of gross. I'm going to try to just pour it. I'm going to have to make a mess. I think that's really neat. They kind of they really layer out even if they fall in with a little bit of force and kind of churn it uh, they still kind of float back up to where they should be layered based on how dense they are. That's very cool. Oop, made the water soapy. Let's see if we can get this to float on top. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if, uh, if you could make these different kinds of soaps, different brands of soaps, layer it out, and what that might tell you about how concentrated the soap is. And with the milk, I think it's really significant that this is whole milk because if you use 2% milk or skim milk, you would have just a different, um, a different result. So that would be an interesting thing to do as well as where does that, um, how does that relate to itself, to each other? Okay, we got soapy, milky water in there. Let's see if we can get it to settle. I can see all those different layers. The honey, corn syrup, maple syrup, milk, soap, water. I might have messed up the water though. Okay, here comes the vegetable oil. Now I'll go a little bit more slow. Oh yes, I should have gone a little bit slower, but I can still see the layers. They mixed a little bit. And when something does mix, it's called uh, miscible. And things that do not mix are called immiscible. So we can get things, some things dissolve. They dissolve in water. And some things will not dissolve in water. And other things will dissolve in fat and not in water or in oil. Okay, there's our vegetable oil. Very cool. This, I use corn oil on this. That'd be another interesting thing to do. Is what are the densities of different oils? I don't know. Okay, here's the rubbing alcohol. Go nice and slow with these thin liquids.
and that these are more water than oil really keeps the barriers as well. Yeah, this is so thin, it just wants to come right up. This is a guide that's rubbing alcohol green, so that tells me something that this is more, that, that rubbing alcohol is not an oil because it dyed easily with the water-based food dyes. And I'll have some links to some different uh, experiments, which I really thought were awesome. Uh, one was um, with different kinds of, different amounts of simple sh syrup. So you dissolve sugar, and this one is a lamp oil, and this one is an oil, which should sit right up on top of our last liquid here. Oh, it's kind of turning, let me go slower. But you make different, different densities of syrup and then you uh, can layer those syrups because their densities are different. They have different amounts of sugar in them and candy making is a really cool science. Okay, last bit of lamp oil. Very cool. in there. Okay, now we have all of our liquids in there and we're going to drop in some harder things. Okay, let me follow my list here. Okay, first I have a metal bolt. We'll drop that right in there. Can you make a guess? Ooh, look how slowly it landed into that honey really slowed it down very dense fluid uh, next is popcorn kernels okay okay see uh, it stopped right in it stopped in the maple syrup let me kind of drop them on the side so maybe we can see them oops I lost it Okay, next is a game die. Chunk. Oh yeah. Is it gonna go pass through the honey? It's in the corn syrup. Almost. Yeah, I think it's gonna go all the way down. Okay, it actually called for a um, cherry tomato, but I don't uh, eat a lot of tomatoes, so I have a radish. So let's see where that radish ends up. Bloop. Maybe we won't be able to tell. I'll tell you where it goes. I think it's on top of, I might have to poke it or something, of the, <laughs> of, of the uh, above the last of the syrups. Uh, let's see, plastic beads. Like it is floating on top of the milk. It is floating in the oil. It sinks below the oil. Okay, plastic beads, plastic cup. Let's see if I can get this in there to make it fall and want to sink. There it goes. And it floats on top of the rubbing alcohol. And of course, our ping pong ball right there on top. Excellent. So it's great to try to figure out what is going on in our uh, everyday life. And it's wonderful to write stories about it too. Goodbye.